This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a horror thriller film called Embrace of the Vampire. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Inside the bell tower of a university, the vampire writes a journal recalling when he fell in love with a woman while he was still a human. He was a nobleman while she was a maid to the royalty, so they had to meet in secret by the brook at the end of the day. After spending time with his lover in their secret meeting place one day, the nobleman stayed behind, wishing that he had more time with her. Little did he know that it would be their last moment together. When he fell asleep by the brook, three nymphs approached him and started caressing him until he woke up. After putting an ankh around his neck, the nymphs began piercing his flesh with their sharp fangs. Having turned into a vampire, the nobleman lived on, but he had to deal with the pain of losing the love of his life. But centuries later, he found the soul of his lover again in a young college student named Charlotte. The vampire reveals in his diary that he has only three days left before falling into eternal sleep. Charlotte's soul can save him, but she loves another man. The vampire intends to cast doubts into the mind of the young lovers, so he can take Charlotte's soul and be with her forever. In the women's dorm, Charlotte wakes up in her bed hearing the vampire's voice. The vampire implores Charlotte to come to him, so she leaves her room ignoring a phone call from her boyfriend, Chris. As she heads to the bell tower, Chris leaves a message telling her that he'll come over because he's worried about her. When Charlotte reaches the vampire's den, he puts the ankh around her neck, noting that he can't just take her soul. Charlotte must fall in love with him before he can consume her blood and take her as the lover that he lost long ago. The vampire asserts that he could destroy Chris, but he realizes that it will break Charlotte's heart, so he decides to wait for their relationship to break down over the next three days. Soon, Chris arrives and sees Charlotte lying on the steps of the dorm. When he lifts her to take her inside, Chris doesn't notice the ank on the ground. In the morning, Chris tells Charlotte that he found her unconscious outside the dorm. Charlotte explains that she thought it was only a dream, and tells him that it may take a while before she can get used to living in the dorm. As the two lovers kiss, Chris attempts to initiate intimacy with her, but Charlotte isn't ready. Chris expresses his frustration that Charlotte's mother enrolled her in a Catholic school, where she was taught to behave like a nun. He quips that Charlotte should have inherited some of her father's promiscuity, but she points out that her father died alone, and she didn't even get to see him. Charlotte explains that she does not intend to keep herself chaste until she gets married. She just wants to wait for the right man to come along. On their way out of the dorm, Charlotte's friend Nicole reminds her that they have to go to the bookstore later. Before parting ways with Charlotte, Chris reminds her that she'll be celebrating her 18th birthday in three days and suggests that it will be a good time for them to make love. Charlotte responds by hinting that she wants to get intimate with him on her birthday. That night, the vampire visits Charlotte in her dorm room after she falls asleep. He whispers to her that love is a curse on humans because it weakens their power. He then vaporizes Charlotte's crucifix and puts his ank in her hand. Charlotte soon wakes up as the vampire starts caressing her. The vampire urges her to spend eternity with him as he kisses her body, but Charlotte resists. The vampire suddenly disappears when Charlotte throws the ank on the floor. When he returns to the bell tower, the vampire realizes that he has only two days left and he's getting weaker every hour. After attending class the following day, Nicole introduces Charlotte to her friend Eliza. As they walk back to the dorm, Nicole tells Charlotte about when Eliza accidentally recorded an answering machine message while she was sleeping with a man. Charlotte, however, doesn't seem to care about the story. Eliza gets upset and deduces that Charlotte is uninterested because she's a prude. However, Charlotte later explains to Nicole that she's having difficulty staying focused lately because she keeps daydreaming. Nicole surmises that she must be having trouble adjusting to her freedom in college, so she advises her to relax and have fun. When Charlotte looks for her crucifix in her room, Nicole finds the ank on the floor. Charlotte notes that she's never seen the ank before, but she dreamt about it. She recounts that it was worn by a vampire who wanted to sleep Sleep with her. Nicole remarks that Charlotte's dream may be telling her to spend time with other men, so Nicole puts the ank on her and takes her to a party. Upon their arrival, Nicole leaves Charlotte by herself while she flirts with two other men. Not long, Milo approaches Charlotte and compliments her ank. Milo realizes that Charlotte doesn't know much about the jewelry, so he explains that the ank is an ancient Egyptian symbol for eternal life. It is believed to have sensual powers. After Milo leaves, Charlotte suddenly gets the urge to go to the rooftop. When she gets there, she finds the vampire waiting. Charlotte notes that she met him in her dream, but the vampire discloses that the meeting really happened. When he notices a cut on Charlotte's finger, he takes her hand and tries to lick the blood, but he manages to resist. Charlotte licks the blood herself and starts kissing the vampire, but he suddenly disappears when Nicole arrives. Nicole takes Charlotte to a secluded building and leaves her with a man named Jonathan. Nicole assures Charlotte that she won't have to do anything that she doesn't want to, but Jonathan attempts to kiss her against her will. 
Not long after, the vampire appears and stops Jonathan. Soon after Charlotte flees, the vampire bites Jonathan in the neck and drinks his blood. Afterward, the vampire attacks the man making out with Nicole. He then tells Nicole that he needs Charlotte to remain pure before draining Nicole's blood. Later, Chris dreams that Charlotte is making love to the vampire, so he immediately calls her when he wakes up. After putting down the phone, Chris heads to a bar because he can't get back to sleep. The vampire, who is sitting a few seats away, strikes a conversation with Chris and guesses that he's in love with a beautiful woman. The vampire notes that men find it hard to trust women completely, and they always want to know where they are or what they're doing. When he asks Chris whether that's love or doubt, Chris contends that it's love. After Chris leaves the bar, the vampire recalls the maid that he once loved and wishes he never fell for her. He surmises that he wouldn't experience the pain of losing her, if only he doubted her back then. The vampire vows to cast doubt about Chris and Charlotte's heart as a gift, to make it easier for her to come to him. As Charlotte sleeps, she dreams about Chris making love to another woman. Chris tells Charlotte in her dream that he's not going to wait forever. The following day, Charlotte meets a photographer named Sarah. Fascinated by Charlotte's beauty, Sarah invites her to her studio in the dorm. As Charlotte looks at samples of Sarah's work, the photographer takes the opportunity to snap some pictures of Charlotte. After a while, Sarah unbuttons Charlotte's shirt and continues taking photos with her chest, exposed. Soon, Sarah stops taking pictures and starts kissing Charlotte's body. They kiss momentarily on the lips, but Charlotte suddenly decides to leave the studio. When she gets back to her room, Charlotte calls Chris to tell him that she won't make it to their date that night because she has to study. Chris surmises that she's feeling anxious about making love to him, so he tells her that they don't have to do it. He just wants to spend some time with her, but Charlotte stresses that she has to study alone. When Charlotte attends class later that day, she notices the vampire a few seats away. She tells him to leave her alone, but the vampire contends that he can't stay away from her because he needs her to stay alive. He explains that he tried to forget about her, but he found out that his need to survive is too strong. The vampire taunts Charlotte that Chris won't sacrifice his life for her, and she doesn't want to do the same for him. He then reveals that he will die when the clock strikes midnight. He stresses that he won't display any weakness or remorse when he takes her that night to keep himself alive. Charlotte yells at the vampire to stop when he grabs her by the hair. The vampire disappears while the whole class looks at her, so Charlotte storms out of the lecture hall. Charlotte tries to study later that night, but she falls asleep and dreams about getting intimate with Chris and Sarah. Not long after, the vampire joins them. Charlotte soon wakes up and finds Chris sitting beside her on the bed. When she asks why he's there, Chris explains that he just wanted to see her. Chris then expresses his concern that their relationship might be in trouble because Charlotte is being uncommunicative. He asks her if she's been seeing someone else, so Charlotte assures him that he's the only one in her life. Charlotte tells Chris to leave her alone, so he goes to a bar to play pool with his friend, Mark. As he confines in Mark about their relationship, a woman named Marika approaches him and asks him to buy her a drink. Meanwhile, Charlotte decides to go to a party wearing a skimpy dress from Nicole's wardrobe. Soon after she arrives, Eliza offers her a glass of wine, but Charlotte is unaware that it's spiked with a recreational substance. Not long after, Charlotte starts tripping absolute balls and sees the partygoers copulating with each other. She sees Nicole making love to a man, while another man beside them invites Charlotte to join them. As Charlotte continues looking around, the vampire appears and offers to take her away from the party. She runs away when the vampire starts sinking his fangs on the necks of her friends. Back at the bar, Marika seduces Chris and takes him to an alleyway to make love with him. As she kisses him, she urges Chris to forget about Charlotte, promising that there will be no pain when she's gone. Chris soon stops her because he's unable to get rid of his feelings for Charlotte. Before Chris runs away, Marika briefly changes into her true form and reveals herself to be the vampire. Later on, Sarah stops by Charlotte's dorm room to check on her. Sarah notices that Charlotte's behavior has changed significantly. She points out that she seemed like an innocent girl before, but she's turned into a wild woman. Sarah then remarks that it must be due to the stars because Venus, the planet of love, is reflecting the sun ten times brighter than the moon. Charlotte starts fondling Sarah's body and kisses her. Sarah reciprocates, but she ends up leaving when Charlotte bites her lip. Charlotte sees Milo outside her room and tries to seduce him, but Eliza interrupts her. The two women end up fighting after insulting each other. Eliza slaps Charlotte in the face, so she fights back by kicking her in the belly. Charlotte immediately returns to her dorm room, so Eliza bangs on her door and tells her to come out. The vampire soon arrives and bashes Eliza's head against the door. After Eliza drops to the floor, the vampire licks the blood splatter on the door. 
On the other side, Charlotte smiles as she senses the vampire's presence. Soon, the vampire returns to his lair in the bell tower. As Charlotte lays in bed, the ank hanging on her neck suddenly glows, and she hears the vampire's voice calling out to her. The vampire urges Charlotte to be with him, claiming that she has nothing to look forward to in her life. As Charlotte makes her way to the bell tower, Chris arrives outside the dorm and follows her. When Chris reaches the top of the tower, the vampire is already attempting to feed on Charlotte. The vampire tells Chris to leave, and warns him that he'll only find death if he stays. He contends that Chris can't take Charlotte away from him, because she doesn't know him. The vampire soon starts feeling weak as midnight nears. Chris tries to attack him, but the vampire uses his remaining power to knock him down. When midnight strikes, the vampire tries to bite Charlotte's neck, but he hears her calling for Chris. He urges her to stop thinking of Chris, but Charlotte ignores him and calls out to Chris again. The vampire warns Charlotte that she can't take his love to eternity with her, but he eventually lets her go. When Charlotte and Chris wake up in the tower the following day, they discover that the vampire is gone. Charlotte reminds Chris that it's her birthday and kisses him. That same moment, the vampire crawls into his underground lair and reaches for his diary before he fades into an eternal sleep. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.